have a testimony of uh, four years ago today was the first Sunday we came back to church after being in the hospital for a month with my husband. And my testimony is that we got to do online church at the hospital before it was even a thing. We kind of had to blaze the trail <laughs> because we couldn't be here. And so I want to tell you right now, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. If you're here today, it is by God's will that you are here. And God has answered prayers for you, and there has been miracles in your life. And right now, you need to reach into those, those memories, reach into those miracles, and reach in and praise him now, because you're in trouble now. But he has done something for you that you cannot not praise him for. So we're going to praise him together. Praise the Lord right now. Praise you, Jesus. The mountains shake before you, the demons run and flee. Have a mention of your name, King of Majesty. There is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great mighty Amen, amen. Let's keep worshiping him. Keep praising him. Oh, hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We praise you, God. Lord, we are here, Lord. We are here, Lord. We have come, Lord, into this place, God, to get a touch from you, God, to feel your presence, Lord, because, God, we need you, Lord, in this hour, God. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We give you, Lord, all the praise, Lord, all the glory, God, for you, Lord, sit on the throne, Lord. There's no one, Lord, besides you, Jesus. For you are great, Lord, and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you touched our lives, God. We said, Lord, your eyes are always upon us, God. You are, Lord, always beside us. So wherever we go, God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, that's it. Come on, we got time. We got time. We got time. online watching worship him get a hold of him he can touch you where you're at he sees you in your need just call out to him hallelujah hallelujah we worship you jesus we praise you 
Hallelujah. I do have some needs today. To be honest, I have quite a few needs today. But I know a God who's ready and he's willing to answer all these needs. We have a need from Sister Moore. Her sister and husband need a prayer today. They need an answer. And her husband needs a healing for his neck. Well, I know somebody that heals. Sister Flocker needs a healing for her back. Oh, she can get a healing today. We need to pray for uh, Julian, who had a seizure last week, for healing, for direction in his life today. That God would touch these seizures. Our district superintendent needs a healing today. Brother Graves, let's pray for God to heal him and to touch him with what he's going, what he wants to do with this district that he needs a to touch today. He needs God. Connor is sick. We need to pray for healing today. Um, as you may have noticed, uh, my sister Destiny needs a healing today. She is not here today. God can touch her. John and Sarah, they need an answered prayer right now. In the name, and I have some dealing or some things at work going on. I got one coworker who is really needs a healing right now. He's going through some health issues, and then my boss's wife, she needs some. She needs a real healing. We, we, I do not really know what's going on with her, or from what I heard, it's not really good. So we need God to touch her today. And I know maybe all you guys have needs. I'm sorry that maybe you weren't able to get them to be before church. But if you have a need today, and if those online, if you have a need today, take it to God right now as we begin to pray. Do not be afraid to speak it. Do not be afraid to just, God, I need this. Cry out to him. He wants to hear your voice. Many times, how did, the, how did God know that the children of Israel needed help? He heard them cry out. We were given a voice for a reason. It wasn't for talking. It wasn't for something out there in the world. It was for, hey, get a hold of me. I need to hear you. So as we go to God right now, lift up your voice. Cry out in that need right now. Jesus, we come before you, God. Lord, with our voices lifted up today, God. Lord, we thank you that, Lord, we can come before you, God. That, Lord, you are our healer. You are, Lord, our provider. You are, Lord, our protector, God. And, God, we ask you, Lord, right now for those that are sick today, God. Oh, Lord, for Brother, Brother Randy Moore, Lord, for healing in his neck. In the name of Jesus, we pray that your healing touch will come up in his neck. Lord, let his neck feel better today. Hallelujah. Lord, for Sister Flock, Lord, for healing, Lord, in her back, God. In your name, Lord, let your healing touch her right now, God, that her, hat, her back would be healed. Oh, Lord, for Julian, Lord, who has seizures right now, God, touch him, Lord. Let these seizures, Lord, go away in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your healing touch, God. Hallelujah, Lord, for Lord, brother, grace, God. Touch his healing today, God, wherever, Lord, it is. We worship you. We thank you, Lord, that you are, Lord, our healer, God. Lord, for little Connor, Lord, that he is sick, Lord. Touch, Lord, that his sickness in the name of Jesus, that it will be gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, for my co-workers, God, for my boss's wife, God. Let, Lord, your healing touch touch it right now, God. That, Lord, you would feel your touch, Lord. Feel your healing today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, yes, Lord. Lord, for Lord, sister or sister and husband, Lord, touch them right now, Lord, where they're at, Lord. They need a direction, Lord, in their life, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for touching them, Jesus. Oh, for John and Sarah, right now, God, when they're going with you, Lord, you see them where they're at, God. But God, touch them, lead them, direct them, guide them, Lord. Be with them, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. We worship you. We thank you, Lord, for the healings, Lord, that you are going to touch. We thank you, Lord, for those that are going to get direction this week. We, pray, we worship you, God. We praise you. Begin to worship him right now. Begin to praise him for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We praise you for you are great, God, and greatly to be praised. We give you, Lord, all the worship, Lord, all the praise, God, anything, Lord, that we can lift up, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Worship you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your touch. Thank you, Lord. Oh, continue to worship him, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
Praise God, praise God. Amen, amen, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in the place today. Praise God, amen. I feel the power of the name of Jesus Christ in this place today. Praise God, amen, hallelujah. A prayer answering God, a God that can touch you, a God that can change you, a God that can empower you. Amen, praise God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, there's something happening right now in the spirit world right now. Amen, that's why we're lingering in his presence right now. That's why we're lingering, amen, hallelujah, in worship right now. Hallelujah, because we need an answer. We need a move of God. We need the touch of God. We need God to reach, amen, with his mighty hand, amen, into this hour, amen, into our place where we are right now. Hallelujah, Lord, we worship you. We praise you. We wait upon you right now. Almighty God, that's who you are. The Prince of Peace, that's who you are. You are wonderful. You are beautiful for situation. You're the joy of the earth. And we praise you. And we wait upon your touch right now. We wait upon your your answer right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we worship you and praise you. Almighty God, in your name I pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your mighty name. God has an answer. The gods of this world cannot touch you help you, minister to you, but the God of glory, he specializes in touching you, healing you, ministering to you, amen. The gods of this world, they can't, but the God of glory can. That's why we serve him. That's why we've gathered here today in his name, amen, for his presence to come down and minister to our needs. There's somebody right now, whether you're watching online or whether you are here in person, you've got a little bit of doubt right now. Would God really touch me? Would God, the God of glory, really care about me? I've come to tell you, he went all the way to the cross for you. That's how much he cares about you. The God of glory that said, let there be, let there be light. And there was light, the same God that scooped into the dust of the earth and formed man and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he became a living soul. That same God robed himself, manifested himself in flesh so that he could come and bleed and die so that you could be free from sin and make heaven your home. That's how much he cares for you. The enemy wants to make you think he don't care. He's on a far journey. He's not listening. I've come to this pulpit today to tell you, yes, he is listening. Yes, he does care. And he wants to touch you. He wants to minister to you. He wants to bless you. He wants to anoint you. He wants to put you in the right place so you can be a blessing to those that you love because he cares for you. He cares for you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I come against doubt. I come against fear. I come against unbelief that would want and was trying to stop your people from being the people of your name. I come against these evil, wicked spirits in the name of Jesus. And I command them to shut their mouth and to leave the people of God alone. And let your people right now... Uh, get a hold of a faith in you. Let your people right now get a hold of a praise for you. Let your people right now get a hold of a worship for you and begin to praise you and magnify you. And as they do that, change the atmosphere of their home. Change the atmosphere of their family. Change the atmosphere of their marriage. In the name of Jesus, I pray, giving you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Lord, let your people be blessed. Let your people be anointed. Let your people be empowered by your spirit. In Jesus' name, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the hour that the Lord has created us for. And this hour, we're going to see the might of God, the glory of God, the power of God, the love of God, the mercy of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated this afternoon. It is so good to be with you today. Whether you're here in person, it's good to see your smiling face. If you're online, thank you for joining with us today. But it's good to be here today. I am honored to be here today. I am so blessed to be your pastor of this great church that God is using and God is forming and God is empowering for such a time as this. Many of you know, already know, the last two months of my life have not been two months that I have chosen, but God has chosen for us. And I thank you for your prayers, the messages that you have sent toward, to me of encouragement. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There's not words that I could say to express how much I appreciate your prayers and love and your words of encouragement to my family and I during this time. But I do want you to know, God's not dead. God's still alive. God's still powerful. God's still mighty. God can still heal. God still can deliver. God can still set free. But I was impressed, as, as my son mentioned, the voice that God gave you. I can remember my mom had finally gotten a phone that you could text. And uh, so I would text her and let her know that's kind of the way I communicate, mom. And she would let me know, Shade, I still like to hear your voice. So I still want you to call me. I kind of feel that God feels the same way. You can text him. But he still wants to hear your voice. Ask and you shall receive. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. He wants to hear. He knows what you have need of even before you ask. But he still wants you to ask because he wants to hear your voice. We've got to ask. We've got to cry out to him. We've got to call upon him. Amen. So I encourage you to continue to do that. This is not the hour to become silent. It's the hour to pray like never before because we need a move of God. Some of the last words my dad and my mom spoke to, us, to, to, to those that are around them, this is the hour of the harvest. I, when I heard that, I turned to my wife. I, I said, that's the exact thing that I've been trying to get across to our church. It's time for harvest. I didn't want to borrow the, the harvest time phrase because of those that have been in, 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 the, in the church, the Pentecostal church for very long, you know what make, that makes reference to. An old rodeo, a radio, pro, an old, I shouldn't say old, but a radio program that used to be called Harvest Time. And it would be spread throughout the world, that, that particular program. But it is time for harvest. It is time for harvest. The sacrifices have been made, the seed has been planted. And now it's time to receive the abundance of the harvest. That's the reason why right now, if you're going through a difficult time, keep going through it because there's harvest on the other side. There's blessing on the other side. There's miracles on the other side. Praise God. That's not even what I'm preaching today, but, but it's good anyhow. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I want to encourage you. It is not the time to throw in the towel and get quit. It is time to press that much harder. And say, devil, I don't care what you do or what you say. You're not t stopping me from living for God. You're not going to stop me from honoring God. You're not going to stop me from worshiping God. Amen. Because I choose to serve God. I choose to live for him. Amen. I want to thank Brother and Sister Griffiths again for filling in for us last Sunday. Thank you so much from the depths of my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. And, and I appreciate your, your love for the truth and your love for the for the work of God. Amen. And thank you for all those, amen, that came last week. Amen. Because it's easy to say, pastor's not here. I think I'll go on vacation. But, but you didn't. And I appreciate that. Amen. Um, because we've got a work to do. If the, two last, the last two months of my life have taught me anything, uh, well, it's taught me a number of things. But one of those things is, it's time to get to work. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Amen. And we've got to do the work he's called us to do. Amen. 
So just w- want to encourage you, let's, let's do our part so God can do his part in the harvest that he has for us to participate in in this hour. Praise God. Thank you again for your faithfulness in your offerings and your tithing. Continue, amen, to honor God in that way. Um, he, if you're here, of course, in person, where our offering plate is there by the, by the, uh, uh, the door there as you go out. Make sure you, you place your offering there. Amen. Thank you for being faithful in that. Amen. Don't want to cheat God. In fact, the Bible doesn't call it cheat. It calls it rob. So you don't want to rob from God. Amen. So be faithful in your tithing and your offering. Amen. And those that are online, there is a, way, there is a, a, a place you can go there on Facebook. Amen. That you can send in your offering that way. And if you have a question concerning that, feel free to make a comment there in the comments. And uh, we will get back with you on that because we want to make sure that you have that avenue, amen, to bless the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise God. Would you stand with me today? I'm sure there's some things I meant to say that I did not say, and they'll come to me after service, and I'll get those to you uh, later. Amen. Praise God. But, uh, But I do want to turn to the word of God. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 12. Amen. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 12. We want to take our reading from there today as we look into the word of God. The Bible reads, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You do not have to turn here, but I also want to read from 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 through 6. And it says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having a readiness in revenge to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Today I want to preach, and you probably cannot tell that I want to preach this because what I've read to you and what my title is doesn't make sense, but hopefully by the time I'm done today, it will make sense. And that is I want to preach from the title today, My Approach to the Throne. My Approach to the Throne. Would you pray with me right now? Heavenly Father, we love you today. We give you all the praise and all the glory. What a mighty God you are. We have felt your presence. Uh, We are so thankful, God, that you love us so much, that you have given us emotions that we can have that can reach out and touch you, and you can reach out and touch them, and we can feel you, God. Lord, touch us. We can feel your glory. We can feel your presence. Uh, We can feel your love. We can feel your peace uh, as it wraps itself around us today. We can feel the empowerment of your spirit, God, Lord, as we sense uh, your presence in our, in our midst, God, and we give you the thanksgiving from the depths of our heart for that, God. What a mighty God you are. What an awesome God you are. You are great and great and to be praised, and I give you praise, and I give you glory in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen, amen, amen. If we were, amen, not in COVID-19, I would t- tell you to shake someone's hand and sit down, but if you could give them a, you know, a, 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 a high five, amen, a, I, I forget what that's called, a air high five, there we go, amen, praise God, give somebody an air high five and you may be seated, amen, praise God in the house of God today, my approach to the throne, we are in a battle today, we are in a war today, there is no doubt in my mind today that we are in the battle for our very lives and our very existence today. Because there is an enemy today that's doing everything he can. He's using every avenue that he can, every means that he can to try to destroy the faith of the saints of God. He's trying to take the saints of God out. He's trying to destroy the work of God. He's trying to destroy the truth of God. He's trying to destroy today in this hour anyone that aligns itself to Jesus Christ. 
He's doing everything he can. He's coming against it with every, with every weapon that he has at his disposal, trying to destroy the church of the living God. There is a battle. Don't put your head in the sand today. Don't go uh, 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 hide out somewhere. Amen. You need to wake up and realize, church, uh, that we are in a battle today. We are in a war zone today. You might not have chosen, amen, to be in a war zone. It don't matter. Amen. You are in a war zone today. The devil's throwing everything he can against you. Uh, he's throwing everything of doubt. Uh, he's throwing every bit of fear. Uh, he's throwing every bit of unbelief at you. Uh, there is no, uh, there is not by coincidence, uh, amen, that, the, that you can get on the, the, the uh, uh, web today or the internet today and it is full of things that are anti-God. That's not by coincidence. That's not by accident. But there is a spirit of wickedness. Amen. The Bible talks about the spirit of the Antichrist already at work. And that's what we're seeing today. The spirit of the Antichrist. The spirit of darkness. The spirit of wickedness. The spirit of ungodliness is at work in our world today. In fact, uh, uh, it's working overtime. I, I don't even think uh, that that wicked, evil spirit even takes time to sleep. Uh, amen. It's working day and night, uh, 24, uh, amen, hours a day, seven days a week, uh, 365 days and a quarter, amen, a year, amen, trying to destroy you and I because that is its goal. That's its goal. If you have not recognized, uh, you need to recognize. Amen. You can't give it that spirit an inch because it's not happy with an inch. It's not happy with this little compromise and that little compromise. It's not going to be happy to it devours your relationship with God. That's what it's after. And I've come to tell somebody today, don't play around with the spirit of ungodliness. Don't play around with the spirit of worldliness. It ain't time to play around. There's a reason. Hey, man, there's a reason today that we live the way we live. There's a reason today we dress the way we dress. There's a reason today that we don't go to uh, 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 certain places. Why? Hey, man, because uh, I can't give the devil an inch. I can't open my door of my life just to crack for him. Because if I do, he'll get his foot in there. He'll get his fingers in there. And pretty soon that door of my heart will be swept wide open. And he'll come in and devour my relationship with Jesus Christ and destroy me. That's the reason why we've got to, to wake up. Uh, amen. We've got to shake ourselves uh, and realize we are in a battle for our very existence. Uh, we are in a battle. Amen. Today. Uh, amen. We are in a war zone today for our very lives, for our very relationship with Jesus Christ. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. If you are so mad at somebody, hey man, you need to wake up and realize that's not the person you need to be mad at. What you need to get mad at is the devil. What you need to get mad at is the spirit uh, uh, of wickedness that's working in this hour. What you need to get mad at, uh, hey man, I, I, the Bible says be angry and sin not. See, some of us have taken, well, you're a Christian, you can't get angry. Where's that in the Bible? You won't find it. Because the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says be angry and sin not. Some of us need to get a little mad today. Some of us need to get a little angry today. Growing up, we used to play football out in the front yard. It would be my brother Jason and I against my oldest brother Jess and my, uh, one of my younger brothers, Walt. And, uh, of course, as we played, Jason and I would start getting the better of them too. And then Jess would get Walt back there in the huddle. And he'd get Walt so mad. He, I don't know what button he pushed, but he'd start pushing buttons on Walt. And Walt would get angry. Walt would get mad. And pretty soon, uh, he was much smaller than I, but he would just run right through us. And, of course, uh, the way it was, Jess would knock us down and, 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 uh, and, 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 and that. But, but, but the angrier Walt got, the better he played. So we used to try to joke with him a little bit, try to get him happy, because we didn't want him to get angry. Somebody needs to get angry in the Holy Ghost today. 
What's coming against you is demonic spirits. So what's coming against you is the oppression of ungodliness and wickedness. And you need to wake up and realize you're not fighting against flesh and blood. But you're warring, amen, against the spirit of Antichrist that's trying to destroy your walk with God. That's trying to destroy your marriage. That's trying to destroy your family. That's trying to destroy your neighborhood. Amen. And somebody, amen, needs to wake up and realize I'm not going to settle for that no longer. I'm going to stir myself and wake myself up. And I'm going to begin to pray and I'm going to begin to call on God. I'm going to begin to exercise, amen, the power of God in me. I'm going to begin to exercise that precious name of Jesus and I'm going to start declaring some new territories for God. Occupy, remember? Occupy till he comes. Somebody needs to make some supplications today. Why? Because we are in a war for our very existence. There's a story And I'm not going to go through it today like it deserves to be gone through. But the Bible gives us a story of a Jewish girl named Esther. And as you look into the story, as it begins to unfold, I would say his name, but I would butcher it and mess it up. So we'll just call him the king. Had a banquet, and the king desired his queen Vashti to come before them and the queen refused to come and because of that the king dismisses her and through a period of time and I'm not going to go through all the details that Esther went through but finally she becomes queen the king accepts her as his queen and she becomes queen and as she becomes queen she has a relative named Mordecai And this relative called Mordecai made a certain individual mad named Haman. Why did he make him mad? Because Mordecai would not bow to him. Hello? Mordecai would not compromise his devotion to his God. And because of that, Haman became angry with him. Could I stop for a moment and tell you? That's the reason why we can't compromise in this hour. It ain't time to quit being apostolic. It ain't time to quit being Pentecostal. It ain't time to quit being one God. It ain't time to quit being and believing in Jesus' name baptism. We have got to cling to our very doctrines that come from Scripture like never before. We have got to cling to them. Mordecai refused to bow. Mordecai refused to give any devotion to Haman. Therefore, Haman becomes angry. And so Haman comes before the king. And he declares in in Esther 3, verse 8, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom. And their laws, oh man, I could preach this right now. But i got to get to where I want to get to. But boy, I feel the preaching this. There's a s- people dispersed throughout the world right now whose laws aren't like the laws of the land. Because our laws are based on Scripture. Our laws that we live by are based upon the Word of God, are based upon the plan of God, are based, to, based upon the kingdom of God. Their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep they the, the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of this business to bring it into the king's treasure. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman the Agite, the Jew's enemy. And letters were sent by the post into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, To cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women in one day. There is a decree going forth right now. Could I tell you? By the God of this world to destroy the church of the living God in this hour. It's not by coincidence that California is having difficulty right now to even gather together to have church. 
because there is a decree going forth from the God of this world to destroy the people of God. To destroy not just the old, but the young. Not just destroy the men, but also the women. Its desire is to destroy the very, the very existence of the church of the living God. I'm telling you, we are in a battle today. We are in a war zone today, much like Esther was in that hour, much like the Jewish people were in that hour. They were going against an army. They didn't even know what the army was. It wasn't like, uh, all right, we're fighting this nation or that nation. But there was an undercurrent uh, that was sent into that, uh, into, into that world, their world, uh, that was trying to destroy them and, and trying to take them out. So Mordecai, in chapter 4, makes an appeal to Esther. Said to Esther, think not that thy th- uh, with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Oh, could I tell somebody today, you cannot sit the fight out. You cannot say, oh, well, I I won't worry about nothing. I'm not going to do anything about it. I'm just going to sit back and and be silent and be quiet. Because if you choose to be silent and you choose to be quiet, you're going to be destroyed. Your walk with God is going to be destroyed. Your chance of your family is being destroyed. Notice the words here. I've preached this before. But if you've forgotten, I've come to tell you one more time. Notice what Mordecai said. Deliverance is coming. There's no question, there's no doubt that God is going to come through. I'm going to tell somebody today, there is no doubt that God's not done yet. There's no doubt in my mind that God is fixing to do a mighty work. There's no doubt in my mind that God's fixing to do some powerful things. Miracles are going to blow our mind of what God's fixing to do in the world that we live in today. God's not on a far journey. God's not giving up. God's not walked out on the church. God is fixing to do a powerful work in this hour. God's fixing to do a mighty work in this hour. There is no doubt in my mind that God's fixing to gather a great harvest of souls in this hour. There is no doubt God is going to do a work. He promised that the latter end shall be greater than the former. And I believe, amen, that God's fixing to pour out his spirit upon all flesh like never before. The church is not going to sleek out the back door. The church is going to go out victorious and powerful and mighty in these last days. Oh, I'm preaching against the spirit. I'm not preaching against you today, but I am preaching against the spirit right now that wants to put fear and doubt in your heart. And I'm preaching against that spirit today. It's a lie. It's a lie straight from hell. God is going to do a work. We're going to see miracles. We're going to see signs and wonders. We're going to see people baptized in Jesus' name. We're going to see people filled with the Holy Ghost. Begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. We're going to see families restored. We're going to see marriages restored because God is going to do a work in this hour. The backslider is coming home. The prodigal is coming home. The sinner that never knew God is coming to know God because God is going to do a work in this hour. There is no doubt in my mind that God is not that they, that God is not going to do a work. God is going to do a work. Esther, there's no doubt, Mordecai said, God's going to bring deliverance. But the question is, Esther, are you going to be a part of it? The question is, Esther, if you are going to be a part of it, thou, thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. Child of God. There's no doubt God's going to do a work. I just preached that. But are you going to stand up and be a part of it? Are you going to pray like you've never prayed? Are you going to push some food away and spend some time fasting like you've never done before? Are you going to witness like you've never done before? 
Are you going to be faithful to the house of God like never before? Are you going to be faithful to, to, to your devotion to God like never before? God is going to do a work, but the question is, are you going to be a part of it? Are you going to put yourself, amen, in the hands of God? Are you going to place yourself? Are you going to stand up, amen, in this hour and, and call upon God, amen, because God is looking for you. God will use you. Such as a time as this, Esther, you're placed where you are, Esther, for such a time as this. But if you choose not to say anything, Esther, you're going to be destroyed. Can God save your, your, your unsaved loved ones? Yes, he can. Will he? That's your decision. You are the representative of, the, of your family to God right now. If your family is backslidden, if your family don't even know God, if your family don't even know the truth, you are their representative to God. And if you choose to shut up and you choose not to pray and you choose not to serve God, then they'll never have a chance to know the things of God. You are the one that God has placed in your family for such a time as this. You are the one that God has chosen to place you in the particular family that you're in because he believes that you will make a stand. He believes that you will call upon him. He believes that you will, amen, cry out to him. He believes that you can, amen. Esther, you can do it. Esther, you can make a stand. Esther, you are put that position for such a time as this. My friend, you're put there for such a time as this. But what are you going to do? But what are you going to do? So Esther replies in Esther 4 and 16. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan. And fast ye for me. And neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Esther made a decision that somebody today needs to make. And that decision is, I'm going to fight. And if I perish, I perish. At least I'll perish doing the right thing. At least I'll make a stand for the right cause. At least I'll make an effort to, amen, to stand for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. At least I will be what God's placed me to be in this hour. I will be a voice against the winds of false doctrine. I'll be a voice against the, the, the weapons of, 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 of demonic oppression. I'll be a voice, amen, that will stand up in this hour because I believe that God is able. Uh, Esther understood that the battle was against, wasn't against flesh and blood, but it was against spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, we have got to understand today we are not battling flesh and blood. Now, I don't do, I, I do not and will not, as your pastor, tell you how to mark your, your voting ballot. I will not tell you how to vote. But I will tell you this. You need to recognize we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're not fighting against so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so -and -so. We are warring against the very spirit of Antichrist that's wreaking havoc in our world today. And so I just tell you, amen, you better vote. You need to vote. It, it's, your, it's your duty to vote. You need to vote, but you better do your homework. You better study out who you're voting for and see where they stand because we need leaders that fear and respect God. We need leaders, amen, both uh, uh, in our nation uh, 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 and also in our state, uh, in our city. We need people, amen, that will respect and honor God. We're not warring against individuals, but we are warring against a spirit that's been unleashed upon America to destroy America, the great Satan, as some of them call it. And they're trying to destroy our great nation because our nation was founded, founded upon the scriptural principles and, and the word of God. And they're trying to destroy this great nation. And therefore, we need to make sure we do our homework and vote and put our name on the line for somebody that respects God, honors God. Amen. If they stand for, for an issue that, that, that the word of God, amen, is not for, then you better recognize what that is. Now, that's all I'm going to say for right now. But you better understand. Esther understood. We're not battling against Haman. We're battling against a spiritual wickedness that's trying to devour our people. So, therefore, what does she do? She figured out a plan to make an approach 
to the throne. Number one, she fasted and prayed. Now, the Bible doesn't say she prayed there. It just says they fasted. So she spent some time fasting, preparing her spirit for God to use. We need to prepare ourselves. We do need to prepare ourselves to be used in this hour. I told you at the beginning of COVID-19, we need to pray. We need to prepare ourselves. This is a time of consecration. This is a time of dedication. Rededicating our life for the kingdom of God. Rededicating our homes for the kingdom of God. Rededicating our, 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 our minds. Uh, renewing our minds. Uh, amen. In this hour so that we can be used of God. Amen. No longer, amen, is it going to be that we, got, we, we can be told, go do this, this, and this. Uh, but this hour, we need to be so in tune with the Holy Ghost. Uh, because I can't be with you 24-7, 365. But the Holy Ghost can. And if you're in tune with the Holy Ghost, then when the Holy Ghost says, says go speak to so-and-so, or go call so-and-so, and so, or go visit so-and-so, amen, then you need to be in tune with God to know that that's the voice of God. Amen, because we've got to do a work today that's going to be supernatural. She had to be in tune with God. So she prepared herself to be in tune. Number two, she put on her royal apparel. We have got to maintain our holiness and dedication and consecration to God in this hour. It does matter. It does matter. The Bible calls it an abomination. How can we do a work for God if we're an abomination to God? It's not going to work. Some of us need to look at how we dress, how we conduct ourselves in this hour. She made sure she had the royal apparel on. For you see, there's something that, that maybe, maybe you haven't understood. If Esther went before the king and he denied her, it isn't just denial, it was death. That's why she said, if I perish, I perish. She understood that if I don't go in the right frame, the king chooses not to honor me, he can put me to death. See, we don't have that kind of respect for God, and this is not even, but we don't have that kind of respect for God in this hour. We expect God to be our go-boy. We ask, God needs to do. I, 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 can, I can attest to it. When I prayed for my dad, I expected God to heal him. My mom, God was going to heal him. Because God does what his people call him on. We need to wake up and realize God is not that way. God is sovereign. God is supreme. God is holy. We think we can sin a little bit. We can play around with the things of the world. And still God will hear us. Still God will answer us. Still God will, will, will move for us. No, my friend, that's not how it works. Uh, amen. We need to cleanse ourselves. From the filthiness of the flesh. We need to cleanse ourselves, amen, from the worldliness that's around us. We can't allow that into our spirit. We can't allow that into our heart and mind. Amen. We can't dress like the world and expect God to bless us and God to honor us. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We can't, affect, we can't expect that. We are God's people and we need to live according to his dictate and his demand and his command and his desire. She had to have the royal apparel on. She fasted. She put the royal apparel on. And then she went before the king. And the king stretched out his golden scepter as he honored her and favored her. And I thought, all right, story over with. Story done. But that's not what she did. She requested that the king and Haman come to a banquet she had prepared. She was trying to see if she had won favor with the king. She was trying to get the favor of the king so that she could make her request known. That was not even her request, was to come to a banquet. That's not her request. But she was trying to make sure that she had the favor of the king. She was trying to make sure that the king would honor her because she knew she was a woman in that hour. It's not like it is today. Women did not rule the roost in that hour. Room, women were, were, were uh, uh, considered, I hate to say it, I'm sorry to say it, but they were a step down below men at that time. 
And they couldn't just walk in and demand. And so she had to make sure she won the favor. So she didn't just have one banquet, but she had another banquet. And finally, at her second banquet, she made a request known unto, her, uh, unto the king and said, there is a group of people that's trying to destroy us. And the king, who had given his honor or his favor to, to the queen, asked her who that was. And that was, she declared that was Haman, who had made a ruling that all her people would be destroyed. The king became angry with Haman. And the next day, the king honored her request and had Haman hung upon the very gallows that, Morde, that were built for Mordecai. And in the end, as it all gets down and, and, and it gets finished with, Mordecai receives Haman's properties and receives a great promotion in the earth and in the kingdom. And he becomes second only to the king. What am I trying to say Today, we need to look at our approach to the throne of God. We need a miracle. We need a move of God. I hope you're in agreement with me. Even if you're not in agreement with me, I'm still going to declare to you, we need a move of God in this hour. We need the touch of God. I cannot tell you what will happen November 3rd. I don't know. Probably won't even know then. I don't know. But you know what? My faith is not in November 3rd. My faith is not in, in what's going to happen during the vote. What my faith is in, the word of God. And I believe no matter what happens, God's going to do a work in this hour. God's going to do powerful things. But I've got to make sure my approach to him is right. I've got to make sure that my approach to his throne is in the right spirit and the right attitude as Esther, amen, uh, made sure that she was in the right, amen, as she approached the throne of her king and, and to gain his favor. I believe that we need to also do the same thing. The Bible says, amen, in Psalms 100, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all your lands. Uh, we must, uh, amen, put on the garments of praise, uh, amen, for the Bible says in Isaiah 61, 3, that we we must put on the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Uh, it is time to praise God. It's time to glorify God. It's time to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all your lands. Uh, amen. we got to understand uh, we don't praise him according to what's going on to us. Uh, we praise him according to who he is and what he can do. Uh, amen. It is time to put on the garments of praise uh, in this hour. It's time to rejoice in him and to magnify him. The Bible goes on to say in verse 2, serve the Lord with gladness come before his presence with singing know that he that know ye that the Lord he is God hear O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Uh, we need to understand that Jesus is God. Amen. Jesus uh, is God Almighty. Uh, amen. Jesus is the one. Amen. Praise God. He is the one that we can serve today. For the Bible says, uh, amen, in Isaiah 9 and 6, uh, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. we got to under know the God that we serve. The people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Amen. We've got to know the God that we serve. We've got to know who he is and what he can do and what he wants to do in this hour. We must know him. Amen. We must understand him. And then we must understand that he made us. And not we ourselves. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Uh, amen. Ver, uh, Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Amen. We must know that he is uh, our God and we are his people. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2, 9 through 10. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Which is in times past were not a people, but now are the people of God, we, which we had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Amen. We are his people. We put on the royal garments. Uh, amen. We fast. Amen. We pray. We seek his face. We put on the royal garments uh, and we begin to praise him. Amen. We begin to magnify him. How do we approach the throne of God? I'm telling you how. 
we got to approach the throne in the right way. Esther had to go through a lot of things to approach the king in the right spirit, the right attitude, and the right dress. We've got to do the same thing. You've got to quit going around saying, oh my, we're done. Oh my, it's over. Oh my. We can't do nothing about it. Some of you are going going around, well, my my family can't be saved. My loved ones, they they can't be reached. Uh, They're they're so lost. They're so ungodly. They're they're so worldly. They're so caught up in this world. There's just no way. Amen. I'm here to preach to you. If you'll approach the throne of God today, God could do something about it. God could still work. God could still, amen, make a difference. Amen. But we've got to approach the throne with praise and thanksgiving and magnify his name. Amen. Because the very next verse tells us, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name praise god amen we've got to offer up the sacrifice of praise hebrews 13 15 amen that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name amen instead of complaining praise him and instead of figuring out why it can't happen start figuring out why it can happen because god is still god I I preach this and I'm going to continue till it gets into our very thinking, till it spills out wherever you're at. God is not done yet. God is not finished with America. God's not finished with your loved ones. God's not finished with your your family. God's not finished uh, yet. God is about to do powerful things. And we've got to start speaking the faith. We've got to start speaking, amen, the, 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 the words of praise and thanksgiving unto God. Why is it so many times we wait till God does something to thank him? We should be thanking God before he does anything. Because that's the appropriate approach to God. God wants you to praise him. But two or three are gathered in my name. There am I in the midst of them. Praise God. Amen. We have got to start praising God. Amen. We've got to get out of this mindset that, 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 uh, uh, that, that God can't do anything. God can do uh, exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or even think according to the power that worketh in us. You know what that tells you? You know what that scripture tells me? It tells me God's only as powerful as I let him be. Because it's according to the power that worketh in you. You have control over God. You can shut God down in your life and God won't do a thing. Or you can open up the door and say, all right, God, do everything. You have the control today of how big God's going to be in your family, how big God's going to be in your heart, how big God's going to be in your finances, how big God is going to be in your life. You have the authority today. Amen. And I encourage you, open up your mind, open up your heart, and let God be God. Amen. There was something about Esther that understood, amen, the teachings that she had received as a young girl, how big God was, how great God was, and how powerful God was. And because of that, she could say, if I perish, I perish, but I'm going to do right. And I'm preaching to somebody today, you got to do right. God can do great things, but you got to do right in the eyes of God. And as you do the right things, God will move and God will touch. Bless his name. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We've got to bless the name. Amen. I don't like it when people take his name in vain. Why? Because that name's precious to me. Because by that name, devils are cast out. By that name, we speak with new tongues. By that name, amen, they hear the sick, uh, amen, or, or recover, praise God. That precious name of Jesus, that name that's above every name, praise God. That's worthy of praise. That's worthy of glory. That's worthy of thanksgiving, praise God. We are in a battle for our life today. We are in a battle for our children today. We are in battle for our nation today. We are in battle for our church today. We must understand it isn't people that we're warring against, but it is the spirit of the Antichrist. And just as its father, it has come to kill, steal, and destroy. Therefore, we must make a stand and approach the throne of God in our hour of battle. It is time to make a stand. It is time to understand if we perish, we perish. But I'm going to live for God. I'm going to magnify God. I'm going to honor God. And I am going to make a difference. Just as Esther made a difference 
for her people. Read the story. Esther wins in the end because she made a stand. Church will win in the end if we make a stand. So as we close today on our approach to the throne, I want to turn your attention to Hebrews, the fourth chapter, and read to you from there, verses 14, 15, and 16. It declares a promise to us that I want us to cling to in this hour. For it says in verse 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us, therefore, come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Never before has there been a generation that needed the move of God like today. Never before has there been a generation that needed to see the greatness of God like today. We live in a very perilous, the Bible says, time. And I can read Timothy to you and tell you as he proclaims what hour it was going to be like in the last days, and we see it all around us. And we can go ahead and close our doors and close our heart and close our mind and just go hide out somewhere and say, well, I'll just have to uh, 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 hide out till Jesus comes. And I fear that if we do that, we will become lost. I fear and I'm concerned if we choose to close down and shut our doors and, and hide out till Jesus comes, we will ultimately lose out with God ourselves. Because nowhere in Scripture do I find a group of people that hide out that win. Gideon, he had to step out. I can walk you right down through the, the, the Hebrews, the 11th chapter. They were people that stood out. They were people that tried to make a difference. They were people that would fast and pray and call upon God. And they would make a difference. Church, we have got to stand up and make a difference. We've got to stand up and give a voice to the word of God. You're not going to do that by yelling at people. You're not going to do that by, you know, tying them to a chair and making them listen to you. No, you're going to do that because we don't war against flesh and blood. See, some we got to change our mentality. You're that person that 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 that's anti-God that lives next to you. You're not going to win them by yelling at them, because you're not warring against them. You're warring against the spirit that's in in control of them. And if you don't defeat the spirit that's in control, you'll never win them. How do I defeat that spirit? By what I'm preaching here today, we approach the throne of God. And we call for his mercy. And we call for his grace. That we might obtain it in the time of need. That's how we're going to make a difference. Not by getting on Facebook and declaring everybody that, that, that's, anti, uh, that's against God and against the things of God. That they're a bunch of whatever. No, that ain't going to change them. But if you'll find your closet of prayer. You'll separate yourself unto God. Make sure that you're living that holy life in spirit and in dress. Come on now. We got to approach the throne of God right. Just by us going up and telling God what to do, that don't work. We're not on the same wavelength as God. God is way up there. We're way down here. We've got to approach it right. We've got to have the spirit of Esther and understand I've got to make sure I do this right because I need a touch of God. So I challenge you today as we bring this to a close and you stand with me today. Are you willing to surrender to God and his 
commands so that we can approach to him in the right way. I can't get over the thought. As I'm thinking back over this message today, I can't get over that thought that Mordecai said to Esther. Deliverance is going to come. God's going to deliver his people. There is going to be a church in this hour that's, that's without spot, without blemish, that's holy, blessed, anointed of God. There's going to be a church so powerful. It's going to blow the minds of government figures. It's going to blow the minds of business owners. It's going to blow the minds of other church organizations because God is going to do a work so awesome in this hour. It's going to happen. There is no way. I, I cannot, I can't even, it, it, I, I can't even let it, it doesn't even register that we think that God is just going to get slapped down by the devil and, 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 and slowly fade out to oblivion. God's going to make a stand. He's going to raise up a church that's powerful and anointed in this hour. And we're going to, if Peter's very shadow, amen, could, 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 could heal somebody, praise God, then maybe just a, 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 a text message from one of me or you, amen, is going to bring healing to somebody. I believe that, God can, that God's going to work in this hour. The question is, for you individually, are you going to be a part of it? Esther, he's going to do it. But you've got to make a decision, Esther. Are you going to do what he's called you to do? Or are you going to negate what God wants to do? Because if you do, Esther, you negate and, and don't do what God's placed you in the right place, in the right position for, then you're going to be destroyed. And you're, it wasn't just her, but her father's household. What does that mean? Her daddy was already dead. That meant all the lineage of her, her, of her father was going to be destroyed and wiped out of the plan of God for the Jewish people. That's, that's strong. I don't mind even saying that's a little scary. So you got a choice. Oh, I hope today, whether you're here in person or you're online, that you'll make that choice. You know what? If I perish, I perish. <laughs> if it costs me my life, I'm going to live for God. I don't know. I, I wish I could tell you. Two months ago, I had no clue. Two and a half months ago, praying, talking to God, I heard a message. Talk, talking about sacrifice. Something told me you're going to make a sacrifice. It's going to cost you a sacrifice. And I was going through my mind, what? My family? What? What, 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 what do I have? I, I don't own that much money. So it can't be money. I don't know what it is. I had no clue that that sacrifice would be my mom and dad. Mom was 71, dad was 74. They're not that old. I know I've had people come and tell me, well, they lived to 70. That, 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 that's all you're, you're given. So that, you know, no, they were not that old. But that was a sacrifice. I can't tell you what's going to happen between now and the rapture. I don't know. I wish I could tell every one of you, it is not going to hurt you. You're not going to be touched, and you're not going to have to sacrifice anything. And you're just going to, I, I hope that happens for you. It didn't happen for me, but I hope that happens for you. I don't know what tomorrow holds. Esther had no clue. I believe in her mind. She had to, to come to that place that says, you know what, I, sh I just might die but I'm still going to do it. I can't guarantee what's going to happen. I don't know. But you better die out to the things of this world. That's all I can tell you. From my, What I feel in my spirit is we've got to die out to the things of this world. There's nothing in this world that I'm going to cling to because it doesn't work that way. 
the things of this world shall grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. I don't need the things of this world. I need him. As I walked around this sanctuary yesterday, praying, trying to get through, and I, and, and I'm, I know I've been long-winded today, and I apologize for that. But as I walked around this sanctuary in prayer, praying for today and praying for the future of this church, praying the future of, uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of the children of God and the kingdom of God and the church around the world, I begin to realize that the only thing that matters is Jesus Christ. Do I want a better building? Do I want a bigger sign? Do I want to see the lost one? Do I want to see family come to God? You betcha. But I made a decision yesterday, and I'm hoping that you'll make this decision with me. Whether we ever see a new building or not, whether we ever see the influence we want in the cities around us or not, whether we ever see our loved ones come to God or not, I still love Jesus Christ. I still love him, and he means everything to me. He means everything to me. That's why I can gladly approach his throne, and I'm saying, God, whatever you want to do, not, thy, not my will be done, but thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. I love the United States of America. You cut me, I'll probably bleed red, white, and blue. But America's not my home. There's another place I'm looking forward to. And that's the kingdom of God. And I'm going to love him with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. If you feel that way, I want you to reach out to him right now where you are. Because of COVID-19, we're not able to have altar services around the front, and that's fine. But would you reach out to him, and would you just rededicate, reconsecrate your life right now to him? Would you go ahead and make up your mind? If I perish, I perish. If things don't go A1 A with me and I have to make some sacrifices that I didn't want to make, but I have to, it's okay because I'm going to serve God. I'm going to live for Him. I'm going to follow after Him. I'm going to make sure that He's my Lord and Savior, that He's my King and Redeemer because this world doesn't matter. This world doesn't hold my heart. This world doesn't hold my desires. This world doesn't hold my affections. But the King of Kings, He's the one that matters most. He's the one that I serve. He's the one that I live for. He's the one that I've dedicated and consecrated my life to. And I believe in Him. And I believe in His mercy. I believe in His grace. I believe in His power. I believe in His love. I believe in His promises. And I believe that one of these days, amen, I will hear those words, enter in thou good and faithful servant as I've dedicated my life to Him today. Lord, we worship You. Lord, we praise You today. Lord, we magnify You today. Lord, we magnify and bless Your holy name today. We praise You. Lord, we offer up the sacrifice of praise today. We offer up the sacrifice of thanksgiving to You today, God, and we magnify Your name. You are still great and greatly to be praised. You are still high and lifted up, and Your train fills the temple. You still are sovereign and supreme, O oh God, and we magnify Your holiness. We magnify Your greatness. We magnify Your blessing. We magnify Your faithfulness today. We bless your holy name today. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless your holy name. I worship you, Lord. I magnify you today, Lord. I, I consecrate my life to you. Speak to me, God. Show me, God. Lord, what I need to do to honor you, to, to praise you, to magnify you. God, what do I need to do in my life that will bring honor due to your name today? God, I pray in your precious name because I want to serve you. I want to honor you. I want to live for you today. Blessed be your holy name, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, Jesus. Lord, we worship you and praise you. We magnify your name. Yes, Lord, in your name today, God, I pray. Thank you, Jesus. i
approach to you today, Jesus. Oh, Lord, in your name I pray. Oh, I make my approach to your throne right now. Oh, God, in your name. Oh, Jesus. Lord, in your name. Oh, Hallelujah. I approach your throne today, Jesus. I approach your throne today. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Our approach to his throne has to be with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength as we yield ourselves in this hour, knowing that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but spirits, spiritual wickedness, and all that 
that we're warring against. We can't win this war. That's the key, church. You can't win without Jesus Christ. The devil wants to make you think you can, but you can't. And the only way we can approach God and live for God in this hour is to be completely sold out to him. What matters most is what matters to him. What I want to live for is what he lives for. How I want to think is how he thinks. My affections are going to be filtered through his affections, his desires, his loves, his wants. Completely sold out. One thing about COVID-19, and this is what it's doing around the world, is causing people to make up their mind. Am I going to live for God or am I not going to live for God? It's causing people to get off the fence. One of the last conversations I had with my mom, and I'm sorry, you're going to hear conversations from my mom and dad for a little while yet because they affected my life so much. But one of the last conversations I had with her, we talked about, it is time to get in with both feet and live for God. It is time to get in with both feet. And what did I mean by that is by your whole body. It's time to sell out. Say, I'm living for God. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Praise God. Because I'm going to sell out to Jesus Christ. Because I love him. This mindset, well, it's a heaven or hell issue. That's craziness. If you're living for God because it's a heaven and hell issue, you're not living for God. You're living for yourself. I live for him because I love him. And he loves me. I live for him because I love him. And he loves me. That's the reason why whatever he tells me to do, I'll do it because I love him. As long as you live in the fear of hell, you can't live for God. Somewhere in the mix of your relationship, that fear of hell's got to change to loving him. I know the Bible talks about saving some with a fear. Fear of hell. I, I understand that. But somewhere in that, my relationship with him, that fear's got to change to love. And I'm so glad it has in my life. And I hope it has in your life. That you're here today, not because you're afraid of hell, but you're here because you want to be close to Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. Because that's the only way we're going to make it. That's the only way we can influence those around us. You can't walk up to somebody and say, well, if you keep doing that, you're going to hell. You ain't going to reach them. But if you walk up to them and say, you know what? There's a Jesus that loves you. And he wants you to love him back. And he wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to give you mercy. He wants to give you grace. He wants to bless your life. He wants to bless your family. He wants to bless your marriage. Praise God, I better be quiet. I'm over time. God bless you today, but it's time to love him. It's time to love him. Oh, I hope you love him today. I hope you love Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you for being in service with us today. Thank you for being online with us today. Amen. Keep praying for our church. Keep praying for our fam- uh, uh, the, the families of our church. There are some, amen, that are, that are faithful. I want you to know they're not here in person, but they are faithfully, amen, a part of our service. Amen. Keep praying for them. Amen. Let's get rid of this COVID-19 so we can get back and have church together. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So keep praying for that. But God bless you. Amen. We'll see you. Amen. Next Sunday. At- 2.30, amen, for in-person service, amen, we'll also be there, amen, uh, service there on Thursday night. God bless you, amen, you're dismissed at this time.